I was born, literally. <laughs> my dad was a preacher, and um, so I grew up in church, was saved at youth camp in middle school, and actually baptized by my dad. Um, I lived a good Christian life through high school, never partied, never done drugs, never alcohol, just lived a pretty normal and, I guess, boring life, as some might would say. I started going to youth group here at First Baptist when I was in 10th grade, even though my dad pastored another church um, here in the Raleigh area. God's put special friends in my life um, when I started coming to church here. Um, I believe preparing me for what would happen my 11th grade year. You can go ahead and put the first slide up. At 16, this is my dad. He passed away suddenly from a massive heart attack. Still, under, still don't understand to this day why a preacher such a great godly man, father, um, was taken so suddenly. And I still don't understand, like I said, but I know that God used that time to draw me to himself. I no longer had an earthly father and had to rely on him to fill that void. I was a daddy's girl, being the youngest of three children and the only girl, but God used his time also to form a special bond between my mom and I, and I am so thankful for that even today. And that's awesome. I went off to college, of course, and kind of drifted away from having that close-knit relationship with God. I was still in church every Sunday playing the Christian role, but just wasn't living the Christian life that I should have been, or being the example I should have been. Living worldly ways and in and out of several unhealthy relationships. I finally married in 2005, and three years later, God blessed us with our first child, and that completely changed my life and my lifestyle. That pretty much put a stop to my wild and crazy behavior, but I still did not have that closeness with God that I needed. Okay, Our second child was born in November of 2009. My daughter was born happy and healthy, with no health problems and hardly no sickness her first year of life. Right after she turned a year old, the next one, she seemed to have a cold that wouldn't go away. After several doctor's visits and medicines that, not, that, that, that did not seem to be working, which was my mother's instinct, and knew that something else was going on. After a couple more doctor's visits, um, and the, the thorough physical exams and the blood work that they did, the doctor warned me that she could either have a bad virus or possibly leukemia, which is most of the problem known as cancer. She immediate, immediately sent us to UNC Hospital, where several more tests and scans were performed. And on December 5th of 2010, my baby girl, At 13 months old, was diagnosed, diagnosed with stage 4 neuroblastoma, which is cancer. She had a large tumor covering her liver, which was so, back, uh, so large that it wrapped around um, into her back. The day she was diagnosed was also, also the anniversary of my father's, dad, father's death. Why in the world was this happening to me? Couldn't have been any other day, you know, I mean, why December 5th? I spent many hours and days in the hospital room crying out to God to heal my daughter. She underwent six rounds of chemo, a resection surgery. You can show that next slide. This was her in ICU, where she literally fought for her life for a week straight. Um, had to have a G2 placed, a stem cell transplant, radiation, six months of um, antibody therapy. We did not hear the words cancer free until January of 2012. She finished treatment in March of 2012. You can show the next slide. And this was the bath she got to take after she finished her treatment, and her Groviac line, which was what they used to give her her um, chemos and stuff, was removed. She was not able to have a bath for 18 months. Not that she didn't have a bath. <laughs> not a normal bath, but she could play in the water and such. Um, so here she was enjoying her first bath for, for 18 months. I grew so close to God during this time because I've never felt so hopeless any other time in my life. Helpless, hopeless and helpless. This totally rocked me to the core, and having to see my baby girl literally fighting for her life every day, and there was nothing I could do. I had to realize that God would bring healing to my baby girl when he saw fit, whether that be here on earth or by healing her in heaven. And I also had to hold firm to the truth that my Jenna was his child, and he loved her more than I could or did. A hard truth to accept as a parent, because you can never imagine someone loving your child more than you. But he does. And Psalms 139, 13 says, For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. He 
knew she would have cancer before she was even born. And he also knew that in his timing, not mine, that he would heal her body of this cancer. I thank God every day for bringing healing to her body. And also ask every day that he keep her that way. This cancer has a very high relapse rate or recurrence rate. But I trust every day that God is going to keep her cancer free. So she can grow old and continue to share her story with others. She will celebrate a year cancer free in March. And I give God all the glory. God has made me a stronger woman, mentally, physically, and emotionally, but most of all spiritually. I've always thought of myself as a strong woman and wondered why God thought he had to test me just to see. But I know he's used all these tragic circumstances in my life to bring joy and appreciation for every day he gives me on this earth. Because there is one thing I know is that it can be taken from you in the blink of an eye. God has used my daughter's sickness to help me be a witness to others and continue to share his truth and love to others who are facing this same path. Can you show the next slide? One of the verses that I was my company, Psalm 56, 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. And you can go ahead and show me this. Psalm 34, 17 through 19. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. I'm Jennifer Watkins, and this is my story.